In this video, we're going to take a look at the new automated modeling tool in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the new tool that arrived in Fusion 360 called Automated Modeling. Now, if you've been paying attention to Fusion for a while, you may have noticed that some people had a generate tool that was available inside of their solid workspace. Well, I believe that this morphed into this automated modeling tool, and it's essentially like a pre-step to generative design. So if you wanna follow along, you can go to the description of this video and download this data set. But essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna test out the automated modeling tool on this example, which essentially is going to be a lower control arm for a car. So what I have here in this design is I created a couple of objects. I've got tires that are turning left and right, the one that is just straight. I've got a connection point in green for the lower A arm, and then I've got some things I want it to avoid in red. So I colored these this color just so that it was easier for us to identify. And if you happen to be red, green colorblind, I'm very sorry about that, but hopefully you can still follow along. So to get started, it's important to know that this is a preview tool. Now I haven't used it before, so I haven't enabled it yet. So we're gonna go through this and we're gonna enable this preview tool. And then you'll notice that all the bodies are now the steel gray. It changed it back. So really that red and green color was just the initial color so that we could understand what objects we're selecting. So you can see that there is a faces to connect. So the faces that we want to connect are going to be the outside of these cylindrical faces that used to be green. Then we have bodies to avoid. So we're going to avoid the center section here because we don't want to build through the center. We're going to avoid this area that would be for a suspension or just an opening that you want in the design. Then we're going to avoid the upper and lower sections for the connection point to the spindle. We're going to avoid the tire. And then we're also going to avoid the tire that's turning left and turning right. Even though they're hidden, I can still select them. Now, when we select all of these different bits, what Fusion 360 is going to do is it's going to generate different options for us that connect the areas that we want and avoid the areas that we don't. I'm going to click Generate Shapes, and then I'm going to talk about what is going on in the background. So it's going to be using our form tools to build a smooth body that's going to connect each of these points. The faces that we chose as our connection points are going to be used to build out that open form surface and turn it into a solid body. There are going to be some options that we have, things like smooth or sharp connections. And essentially what we're doing is we're building out different iterations of our design without having to manually model it. Now, this step can take a good bit of time because we have a lot of different things that we need to avoid. And essentially what it needs, or essentially what it should need, is line of sight between these selected faces. This is going to be a much easier solution if it can actually see between those faces. If we just put a complete plate in between, it would take quite a bit longer and it might not even actually create an alternative for us. The first alternative is starting to be generated. So you can see it started with line of sight. It began refining it. You can see it's wrapped around the sharp corner here, but this is the first sort of design alternative. It's still not done 40%. You can see that we've got other alternatives that are being generated. This is what you would think a traditional A-arm that you build out of tubes might look like. And as we go down the list, you can see more and more alternatives are beginning to be generated. We're going to let all of these generate to 100% and then we'll go ahead and take a look. This is also a great time for me to talk about generative design and the differences between generative design, automated modeling, and even shape optimization. Now, if you use Fusion for a while and you've played around with the simulation workspace, you probably have seen shape optimization or topology optimization. Now, that optimization is taking a look at load paths. So you define fixed faces, you define areas that you want to keep, and you define a load on your design. Now, while shape optimization is great for taking a look at where you may be able to remove loads, it's only looking at the load path and not the actual maximum amount of load. It's not telling you that your design will actually pass a load test. Generative design, on the other hand, is taking into account multiple load cases and it is looking at loading and manufacturing methods. So the generative design output will be different alternatives or outcomes, as they call them, 
that will hold up to the loads and constraints that you placed on them. Now, this is great because we've got fluid options and we've got different load case options that we can take a look at. For this design, you'll notice that we're, we're really not talking or looking at loads. What we're doing is we're taking a look at just connecting these points. So you would still need to go through and, and validate this either through generative design using this as a starting shape or through simulation to make sure that your design could hold up. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at this alternative. Alternative five looks the best to me. Alternative two looks okay, but I think five looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna say, okay. Now, as soon as I say, okay, I now have a solid body in my design, this one here. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna isolate it and just take a look at this design. Now you'll notice in here that I've got my sharp connections, the faces that we selected to keep, those are contained within the design. We have a solid body and it just sort of made this thin wall version for us. The original pieces, the pivots that we had were just solid pieces. You can see that they're inside of there. Those solid pieces are smaller than the connection points that we got. So it built outside of what we selected. And this is another reason why we don't wanna spend a bunch of time adding a lot of detail. You don't wanna have threads inside there or press fit holes and chamfers because ultimately this is a starting point. Now, if we want to make adjustments to this, we can always select them. We can use press pull and we can change the size, but you will have some limitations because this boundary fill is uh, taking a look at all the surfaces that were created with the forms tools. Another great option here is the fact that we do get a form body. So if I double click on this, I can actually go in and edit the form body if I want to manually make some changes. I'm going to double click the mouse wheel. You'll notice that we've got frozen edges at that selected face. But if I want to make some adjustments in here, let's say that I want to take these two edges, I can modify these. I can pull them in just a little bit, maybe scale them up if I need it to be thicker there. I can say OK and finish my form and have it reconverted back to a solid body. So once again, using these options in this alternative modeling approach allows you to quickly generate multiple versions of it. Now, what happens if you chose the wrong version or you wanted to make a change? You can always right click and edit this feature and you can select different options. So you can come back in here and you can say, well, I actually want alternative four instead of five or six, and you can play around with those. You'll also notice that there are some best practices options here. And sometimes you'll notice that you have other options. In this case, our alternatives don't have a smooth or a sharp connection option, and that's based on your inputs. Sometimes you will be able to generate smooth or, um, or sharp connections. We've got sharp connections in this case. But the alternatives that we had that were generated, you can see that when we look up here, the, the icon is different. And you can see alternative two has these smooth connections while alternative five has the sharp connections. And they're not identical. So the, the size of this is going to be different. But if we select two and we say, okay, it's gonna come back and it's gonna generate that body for us. And notice that now we've got those smooth connections. This makes the form body a little bit more complicated because now it wraps around here. But you can see that it's done a pretty good job of making that cylindrical. It's a little bit weird here on this face, so you might want to do a little bit of work cleaning that up. But overall, I think it looks pretty good. So that is the basic approach to this new tool that we have in Fusion 360 called Automated Modeling. If you've played around with this, I'd love to know what you've used it for, if you've seen it you know, as a useful option. I don't want to go a bit deeper and dive into generative design in this video because really I only wanted to cover automated modeling. But if you have used this as a starting shape in generative design, I'd love to know if, if it worked well for you or if it gave you any problems. I could see it being a benefit to doing a starting shape if we had maybe a couple of different options for obstacles. Maybe I didn't have that triangle in the middle and let it sort of pick out where I wanted the shape to go. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this result. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. You can always send me an email, support at caducator.com, and leave a comment in the video. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.